So I haven't exactly been in many videos in the past six months and a lot of you have been asking why. I was thinking about where to begin this video and one thing came up and it was thank you. I have spent the last five years of my life sharing my stories with my friends to you watching. Five years of adventures and emotional moments and breakdowns and triumphs. And so many times throughout this process, I've thought to myself, ah. I've thought to myself, how in the world did I get so, so lucky? Well, it was gonna be a lot harder than I thought. When I was a kid in college, when I was 19, I read a book. It was Richard Branson's autobiography. And Richard Branson lived this incredible life when he was in his teens and his 20s and his 30s and even now. And his motto was always that he had to have fun. And I remember reading that book and just thinking to myself, my 20s are about to start and I want to have the most fun ever. And I want to take the most risks possible. And around that time, I started to write my goals and my dreams. My dreams of starting a successful business or getting to travel to places like Australia or Japan. My dream of hopefully inspiring people and impacting the world in some way. And somehow it aligned. And because of me pursuing my dreams, I met three other guys p pursuing theirs. And I even got to have my brother joined us. And now I, I look around me and I, I'm surrounded by my best friends, by my family. I've done more, more things than I could have ever imagined. I've crossed off so many of my dreams that I had written down 10 years ago. There's so much to be thankful for. But about two years ago, I started to get this gnawing feeling that maybe there was something else. Maybe there was more that I wanted to do in a different area. And at first I ignored it. I didn't want to hear it. Life was amazing. I was with my best friends. We were doing all these incredible things. The channel was growing so fast and I was having so much fun. But that voice just was relentless. When I would lay in bed at night, when I would wake up in the morning, when I'd be working here, it just kept coming back. And the voice was just saying, there's something else. And for a while, I didn't understand what that voice was because I was trying to suppress it. But then about a year ago, I started to actually listen to that voice and try to understand what it was trying to tell me. And what it was telling me was that maybe my time on camera was coming to an end. Now, when you're the face of a channel and you're living the dream, quote unquote, it feels extraordinarily selfish to say, hey, uh, you know what, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. And soon enough, I brought this up to Amar and to Tiboogie. And it turned into long conversations of whether me leaving would be the end of Yes Theory or what we would do next or what it would look like. But what's amazing, it's the part where I'm gonna cry again. <laughs> what's amazing about Yes Theory and what we've built together is support. There was nothing but love and support. <laughs> and I knew how difficult it was for them, but they encouraged me to really consider this as a possibility. And all credits to the guys, while all this was happening, they were continuing to film and put together content and go on these adventures. And trust me, when all this stuff is happening behind the scenes, that's a really hard thing to do. So I'm so, so proud of them. But eventually I got to this place where I started to feel more and more comfortable with the idea that I could step away. I saw that our videos were just as good without me, that you guys loved them just as much. And that gave me a lot of peace in coming to this decision. But the beautiful thing is I'm not actually stepping away from Yes Theory. I'm just stepping into a different part of Yes Theory. And for me, that part is writing 
and investing in business behind the scenes. Two things that I absolutely love. And the writing is where I'm gonna be focusing 80% of my time on the newsletter, which I write two of every single month, which you can find the link in the bio, but also our first ever book, which is gonna be released at the end of this year. And I've already started to work on it. I've spent the last few months starting to work on it and it's actually pretty good. Um, I've showed it to a few people and their reactions were really, really promising and really positive. This book that I wanna write is for this 19 year old version of me who read Richard Branson's autobiography. It's the book that I wish I'd read when I was 19. And for all of those of you watching, I genuinely believe it'll be this superpower that you get to read and carry around everywhere. And I genuinely believe it could change your life but more on that later. The other side is the business and the investing side. I've spent a lot of my time in the last few years investing in different startups and even Yes Theory as an investor, for example, in Liquid IV. And now as we continue to grow, part of my role is gonna be trying to figure out what we can build as tools for you to do what we've been able to do over the last five years from a travel website slash company to a festival, to an app, to all these things that we've been talking about forever, but never had the time to actually pursue because I was busy hosting and the guys were busy hosting. And now with me stepping away from hosting, we're building a team to execute on these ideas, which is so freaking exciting because it means that you are one, gonna get a book, and two, you're gonna get tools that can help you live a more fulfilling and adventurous life. So it's good news, <laughs> and that's the thing that I've realized is that change is scary and you have no idea what it'll look like, but ultimately if you're listening to what that voice is telling you, that change is probably a good thing. I don't wanna make like a long rambling piece. I want it to be inspiring, I don't want it to be exciting about what's to come for Yes Theory, because the reality is Thomas and Amar and my brother and the guys are so zoned in on continuing to make content on this channel in fact, this is the first episode of an amazing season and there are several more seasons to come this year. And I go back to what I started with in the beginning. Thank you. I am 28 years old now and I already feel like I've lived a full life. And frankly, that's a lot to do with you. By supporting us, by buying from Seek Discomfort, by constantly encouraging us, you literally helped our dreams come true and you've made a very fulfilled man. So. I am so, so grateful for you, for this community, and I'll still be here, just in a different form. And I think that's the beautiful thing about Yes Theory. It started as videos, but now it's expanding into more, and I'm really excited for us to explore those different mediums. I might come back for a quick hello once in a while on camera, but now there are other dreams to pursue. It's gonna be uncomfortable, but if I've learned anything from my time with my best friends, it's that, that is the number one objective, discomfort. Matt? Yo. What is that right now? It's, I mean, it's pretty emotional. And as I told you this morning, I'm just, I'm so happy to see writing and I'm so proud of you for making the step for yourself and for all of us for Yes Theory. I have faith that the adventure will manifest in a different form. It's not necessarily like the one that I, I know or the one that I've just mm -hmm. gotten used to. Thank you for being the best older brother I could have asked for. And I just want this to be a mark for this new chapter. And to, to mark that, I just uh, wanted to get you a gift. It's in the basement. So. I thought it was in there. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> the whole, imagine the whole time he's not even focused on what I'm saying. He's just like, oh, what's in, <laughs> what's in the box? box? <laughs> what's in the box? Whoa. Oh my God. Hello. This is a reconditioned typewriter from the 60s. It's, it was made in Eastern Germany. Right, no, Western Germany. Western Germany. Yeah. Wow. And this, is, this, is a, this is not a toy here. <laughs> that's so, so cool. So, yeah, it, it's like a piano almost. Like it hits. Yeah. Wow, that's so crazy. Yep, you have to whack it hard. It's like driving stick. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta use, you gotta work. Wow. Oh my God. So you're yeah. gonna have to learn how to get that balance. I'm, Strong fingers. Dude, wherever I travel, I'll just write you guys letters. Aww. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the image of Matt just walking through. Dearest friends. <laughs> <laughs> Day seven in the Amazon. <laughs> and so if I want to bring it back here. Yeah, go on this, like this motion. Yeah, like that, hard. I firmly. see. Do it firmly. There you go, not that hard, but. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to go like Strong that. boy. Yes. Is 
Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you're taking a year off to write a book. Yeah, you know, that's the goal. That's cool. So if I wanna, that. Yeah. Yeah. This actually makes me feel like it's my profession now. Yeah. There you go. Oh, I mean, I want to like learn it to perfection. Yeah. You read the masterful books and you use the masterful tools. Yeah. To one day maybe become a master. <laughs> Namaste. 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 I think that was a haiku. Namaste. Thanks, baby. I gave a We just gifted uh, Matt a typewriter. Look at this. We talked about it yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah. Dude, unreal. Oh, well, I'm not, I don't even, you don't have to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> For now, this is how you get the three of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the, probably the only thing I'm, I actually care about taking with me. <laughs> Shadows in the sky Footsteps in the night Behind me Targets in their sight Running out of light To save me